once again all my vintage dirt bikers and thanks to you all for returning to Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV and a very uh, special uh, thank you to all the brand new subscribers who have uh, recently signed up uh, to view my uh, video content here on Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV. Now coming up in my next video we are going to take another walk through the racing paddock at the 2016 Classic Motocross the Nations event that was held at uh, Bally Black Road in Northern Ireland in 2016 so we're going to take a look at some of those uh, European uh, dirt bikes in the paddock first and then possibly later we will uh, show you some of the racing footage uh, from uh, that event. So I do hope you'll retune uh, to see that. Okay, without any further delay, let's just jump straight in and take a look at our very first machine. Well, it's our uh, first pair of machines in actual fact, and these are a nice uh, pair of uh, CZs from the Scottish team belonging to John Fleming and uh, Archie Baird. Now again, and as per many of these modern day Czechoslovakian classics, these are uh, not original bikes from back in the day because of the many different upgraded parts fitted to these bikes, although uh, essentially the bikes are based around a 1971 chassis and 380 motor, but uh, still uh, quite a nice uh, pair of uh, CZs. Now both these bikes have uh, different plastics, uh, upgraded exhaust expansion chambers and uh, the motor's uh, gear shift mechanism has also been modernised with a new linkage system that eliminates the long throw which is uh, normally associated with these CZ motors and after the modification has been done it does make uh, gear changing as slick as any other uh, Japanese bike would do. Now the plastic uh, fuel tanks on these bikes are not uh, CZ parts but I think these are a pair of uh, Clark fuel tanks uh, based around the older YZ uh, Yamaha bikes but I must say they do look uh, okay uh, fitted to these uh, Czechoslovakian machines. Now the forks are conventional uh, CZ items although uh, new billet alloy CNC machine triple clamps and bar risers have been uh, fitted to suit the rider's height and uh, riding style. Although since these uh, video clips were shot uh, back in 2016, both these bikes have undergone uh, yet more uh, modernization and upgrades and the bikes look uh, very different now from what you see here. But uh, that's the thing with these older CZs nowadays, you can morph your old classic into whatever takes your fancy as there are so many different parts that you can buy now to improve on the original design. Okay, next up, a very nice pair of British made classics and these two Rickman Matisse BSAs are Scottish rider Willie Gordon's uh, race bikes. Now you're probably all familiar by now with these Rickman frame kits which were originally built by Don and Derek Rickman way back in the 1960s when you could uh, buy these uh, chassis direct from the manufacturer at that time and then uh, fit whatever front suspension and motor that you specified and uh, then just add all the other smaller parts to give you the finished motorcycle. But these uh, Rickman frame kits were built to a very high standard and many of those original chassis from the 1960s are still in use today and many have had no repairs done to them uh, during their service which is uh, testament to the original uh, workmanship. And of course you could have your Rickman chassis kit with its uh, fiberglass panels and fuel tank all painted in uh, whatever colour of the rainbow you light and it looks like uh, this owner Willie Gordon's opted for this cream uh, looking colour scheme on his uh, particular bike. 
And of course these are just uh, two of the bikes that you can see in action on the track in the next uh, up and coming video here on my channel where we'll be showcasing uh, racing footage from this event so uh, look out for Willie Gordon riding one of these BSE bikes in the 50 plus uh, age group. Now both these Rickman bikes are of course powered by the well proven uh, BSA 441 uh, four stroke motors and uh, this is one of the earlier uh, B44 engines because of its uh, round barrel and uh, as I remember BSA then went on to the square barrel on these engines in 1967. But I have to say it's uh, quite good to see a nice pair of old British classics among the many Czechoslovakian CZs that were at this event and there were quite a few but I suppose it's all down to your own uh, personal preference really. Uh, some owners like the buzzy two strokes while others uh, would never look past these old British classics. But uh, that's what makes uh, vintage racing so interesting with the many different makes and models of classic machines and of course the personalities of the riders who race them. Okay next up another old BSA and this time it's uh, Jens Backman Skavensen from uh, Denmark and this is his uh, BSA 441 again uh, mounted in a Rickman Matisse chassis. Now uh, Jens is uh, part of the Danish race team and he'll be racing this bike in the 66 plus age group uh, category and uh, all of those uh, racing classes at the 2016 Classic Motocross the Nations are all in age groups so it's not uh, so much uh, what type of bike you ride four stroke or two stroke but it's uh, down to the actual age of the rider that determines uh, which class you race in. Now yet again another of the earlier 1960s BSA engines because of that round uh, barrel and uh, as I just mentioned uh, BSA changed to the more uh, squarer shaped uh, cylinder in 1967 but these were a very good combination of the quite compact and powerful uh, B441 BSA engine and the superb handling at Rickman chassis and uh, with the right rider aboard one of these old classics they could uh, still be a competitive package on the track and uh, this example here of uh, Jens Backman is another uh, good looking uh, Rickman BSA. And next up we have another old classic and this time it's uh, a bike from the team Denmark camp and uh, this is Kurt Lassan's old 500 matchless four stroker. Now although this bike looks like it's in a Rickman chassis again I'm uh, not entirely convinced it actually is a full-blown uh, Rickman frame although it certainly looks similar but uh, maybe it's just that alloy tank that's uh, throwing me off. But uh, we'll give the bike the benefit of the doubt because uh, actually the more I look at this bike the more I'm seeing a Rickman frame but it's uh, quite unusual to see one painted in this uh, red colour. Now this time round we've got that big long four stroking matchless 500 motor in the frame and I'm guessing here once again but uh, I think this could be an old uh, G80 uh, motor in this particular bike. Uh, a quite old uh, power plant for a classic scrambler and uh, as I remember uh, these had a four speed gearbox uh, and magneto ignition and uh, they did have quite a low compression as I remember and were relatively easy enough to kick over once you mastered uh, the knack obviously. But I can see this being a very good engine to power a classic scrambler with the amount of torque from that uh, matchless lump. But again another interesting old uh, classic. Okay next up a couple of uh, nice bikes from Irishman Trevor Calderwood and this is just uh, one of the many uh, CZs that Trevor has in his bike collection and uh, this bike is uh, based around a 1970 uh, 250. But once again this is another of those uh, work in progress bikes as 
uh, Trevor's constantly changing and upgrading his collection of uh, Czechoslovakian racers and since these video clips were taken uh, this particular specimen has undergone further uh, modifications and improvements and uh, here in 2021 uh, more than likely the bike will look much different from these uh, 2016 uh, pictures but nevertheless a lovely looking bike that's had the standard improvement of uh, removing every second cooling fin from the cylinder barrel which appears to be a common modification uh, these days but uh, a nice machine and uh, as I said just one of the many classic racers that Trevor has in his workshop and uh, hopefully in the future we'll be able to uh, showcase more of uh, Trevor's uh, fantastic uh, CZ uh, classic bike collection. Now this machine is also another uh, bike from the Trevor Calderwood uh, Bike Emporium and uh, this is the actual bike that Trevor uh, rode at the Don Matthews CZ World Championships in 2016 when he won the top prize on the day while riding uh, this borrowed CZ and in fact Trevor liked this bike so much while riding it in Marysville in California at that uh, event that he uh, bought the bike from the bike builder and then had it shipped home uh, to his workshop in uh, Newton Ards in Northern Ireland. Now the bikes are Harry Clem special and uh, if you're familiar with the Clem vintage dirt bike builders from uh, Fort Mojave in Arizona then you'll already know that uh, they are the undisputed masters when it comes to tuning these old uh, classic dirt bikes and uh, what they don't know about these old uh, CZs is uh, not really worth knowing. Now parts like these top and bottom triple clamps were all CNC machined from a single block of aluminium and uh, as you'd expect they are uh, lighter and stronger and of course uh, much nicer looking than the Czechoslovakian originals. Now the engine's also a highly tuned 360cc motor and has undergone the Harry Clem internal motor component treatment whereby everything that could be either upgraded or improved upon has uh, been done. Now, uh, no fin removal on this particular cylinder barrel as of course many CZ owners are now doing and uh, as yet Trevor still not fitted the newly upgraded gear shifter mechanism that's currently available for this motor. Now this beautifully sculpted alloy gas tank was fashioned and constructed by none other than the famous Lanny J who is another highly respected builder of uh, alloy fuel tanks for classic bikes and this slim fit on Trevor's bike is certainly a piece of mechanical art. Okay next up this is another nice British classic again this is Philip Edwards 650 Triumph Twin that uh, he'll be racing in the 66 plus uh, class age, age group. Now again another proper old scrambler with that uh, alloy gas tank and the Triumph uh, Twin engine although I'm not entirely sure what the uh, actual chassis is in this bike but uh, nonetheless a lovely old bike once again and a perfect machine if you wanted uh, to take up vintage or pre-1965 racing. Now this Triumph Twin motor will supply all the power that you're ever going to need and it's uh, maybe not the lightest of bikes to throw around but when you uh, hear that uh, 650 twin motor fire into life uh, thoughts about weight on this bike just disappear. But it's uh, certainly another uh, beautiful old racer and uh, look out for Philip on the track on his uh, Triumph in the forthcoming racing footage from this uh, classic motocross donations event at uh, Bally Black Road which will be coming uh, soon. So that's uh, Philip Edwards 650 Triumph. Now uh, next up another BSA and this time this is uh, Jan Radina's uh, 441 
BSA and uh, Jan uh, rides this particular machine in the 50 plus class as part of the Czech Republic uh, race team. Now I think this could be another uh, BSA hybrid as it uh, looks distinctly like it's uh, had a custom built frame to take that uh, BSA engine. And uh, one of the other intriguing things about this uh, 441 BSE engine is that the gear shifters also been changed from the right hand side uh, to the left which is uh, quite a rare modification for one of these old uh, British built uh, motors and it also looks like it's had uh, some kind of clutch modification uh, done as well. But uh, I'm not really sure what to make of this uh, rear sprocket. Now, obviously, it's been modified for weight saving by removing excess metal, although it's uh, probably best uh, not to drop the clutch too quickly on this bike, as I think it may just certainly destroy that uh, very fragile uh, looking part. Now, a quite unusual colour scheme as well on this bike with the blue uh, frame and orange plastics and this front brake hub and the bike's forks are uh, almost certainly not uh, BSE items because it uh, also has uh, modern style handlebars and levers as well. But uh, nevertheless, still a, a nice but uh, quite unusual uh, vintage dirt bike all the same. And it's uh, great to see owners of these old bikes building something that's uh, somewhat different from the usual uh, run of the mill standard engines and chassis. Okay, moving on, it's, uh, our next uh, bike is this quite nice uh, CZ machine and this example is uh, Goran Carlson's 380 bike that he'll be riding in the 50 plus class for the Swedish team. Now once again, and as in the 2015 Classic Motocross Donations, it was uh, pretty hard to ignore uh, these CZs that uh, were at this event in 2016 as there were so many of them around the race paddock over the course of the two days and you could uh, quite easily catch a glimpse of one of these uh, bikes every time that you turned uh, your head. But uh, nevertheless another nice little 380 two-stroker which looks like it's had all the usual uh, mods done to it with replacement expansion chamber and modern Makuni uh, carburetor fitted, although uh, surprisingly the owner's never gone down the usual route of removing fins from the barrel as yet, although I still think that uh, these motors are just fine the way they are, but uh, another example again of these hugely popular Czechoslovakian two-stroke race bikes and just one of the hundreds that were at uh, this event. Now, uh, naturally, you couldn't visit Northern Ireland and attend a classic scramble without mentioning uh, Cecil Pearson's fantastic collection of Rickman uh, Jap scramblers. Now, this personal collection of Cecil's uh, 1930s Jap racers has to be one of the very best uh, in Europe. Now, Cecil had at least six of these unique machines taking part in this 2016 classic motocross donations event and they were all being ridden by his uh, personal uh, team of riders. Now Cecil builds and maintains all of these bikes himself and uh, since these uh, video clips were filmed he's already added at least another two or possibly even three of these uh, Jap bikes to this uh, superb collection of machines. Now, all of the bike's frames are Rickman chassis from the 1960s, although uh, the motors are all 1930s Jap engines, of course, designed by John Alfred Presswich, who originally built these motors for racing in speedway bikes. Now, the engines all have dry clutches, uh, Norton AMC gearboxes, and they're all fueled by methanol and not uh, regular gas. Now, the engine's lubrication system is a total loss system which means that you fill the frame with engine oil and an external oil pump then pumps the oil around the motor and uh, any excess that isn't either burned or not used is then lost 
onto the ground. But without doubt, a very unique collection of Ripman Jap motorcycles from the Cecil Pearson bike collection. Okay, next up we have a very nice collection of 250 Cross Husk Vanners from Team Switzerland and all of these bikes were being ridden in the 50 plus class uh, at the classic uh, donations. Now they are a very nice collection of these uh, very popular and quite rare Huskies uh, made famous of course by Hollywood star Steve McQueen who absolutely loved these Husk Varners and they tell me he had uh, quite a few of these bikes in his own uh, personal collection. Now one of the other things about this set of bikes is that uh, every one of them has been converted to a left side foot gear change which I can only think is to keep the bikes in line with many of the Japanese equivalent uh, machines. Now I personally know a few riders who have done this kind of uh, modification before and the main reason was because they rode other makes and models of bikes as well with the shifter uh, on the left. Although if you're riding two different bikes at a race event, one with a left shifter and one with a right shifter, you can see how it'd be, uh, it would be confusing, uh, not to mention uh, dangerous. So it uh, makes sense to me to have all the shifters on your race bikes all on the same side. But in uh, this shot here, you can see just how it's all put together with these rods and pivot arms. Uh, I must say it all looks quite complicated, but I'll wager that it works uh, very well. But uh, it's still quite unusual to see three of these uh, cross Husqvarna's in one place. I mean, you do see the odd one at a classic race meeting from uh, time to time, but almost never see three at the same time, and uh, almost never see three with this kind of uh, gear shifter modification done. Although apart from that particular modification and maybe uh, different rear shocks and controls on these bikes, these are still uh, quite near original looking machines and it's uh, great to see uh, just three uh, here in one place because these are uh, still good old twin shock racers and very much sought after within the vintage uh, dirt bike community. But again, these old cross husk varners sold very well in Europe during the 1970s, although as you'd expect, they became iconic machines in the USA, mainly because of the aforementioned uh, Steve McQueen. Okay, our final bike for this particular 2016 Classic Motocross Donations walkabout is Dan Axelsson's 400 Husk Varna, who is another of the Swedish race team riding this bike in the 50 plus class. Now again, this is not an original Husky bike as it has uh, different front and rear suspensions from the standard bike and uh, once again, this is yet another 400 Husqvarna that's been converted to a left side gear shifter. Now not exactly the same as the previous three uh, 250s that we just saw but uh, along the same lines using uh, rods and levers to get uh, the same result. But a nice uh, Husky hybrid all the same that looks like it's uh, got a nice pair of Olin's classic shocks on the rear and uh, a different tailpipe and expansion chamber and uh, as you can see different uh, front forks as well and triple clamps but uh, that's probably uh, just to improve the overall handling of the bike at the front end. But certainly a good combination of that uh, improved suspension and this uh, 400 uh, Husqvarna motor. Now you can get a better view here of those uh, billet uh, alloy triple clamps and those modern style handlebars and controls and those uh, bar risers will certainly improve the bike's uh, riding position but it looks like the front drum brake on this bike is at least a stock uh, husky item although uh, don't get me wrong here I'm not knocking this bike uh, there's nothing wrong with fitting upgraded parts to your old racer to help improve the running or handling of your bike and as I keep saying it's more important to keep these old bikes racing on the track than actually worrying about if it still has all of its original bits on it from uh, 40 years ago. 
But anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this very small sample of the many bikes that I captured at this 2016 Classic Motocross Donations event and this first featured batch are just the first of many. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of those uh, nice old uh, vintage dirt bikes in the paddock at the 2016 Motocross Donations from Bally Black Road in Northern Ireland. And uh, coming up in my next video posting, we will uh, showcase uh, some of the racing footage from uh, that 2D event at uh, Bally Black Road. So until the next time, I hope everybody continues to stay safe and well. And uh, who knows, uh, sometime in the future, we may uh, manage to meet up at a race uh, paddock uh, somewhere in the UK. So uh, we'll look uh, forward to that. So until the next time, uh, everybody stay safe and well. And we'll speak again when we all return to watch Classic Dirt Bike TV.